Hello and welcome back to another show. My name's Sid. If you're new here, maybe consider subscribing, leaving a comment, liking some of my videos. It really helps grow the channel. I just hit 28 subscribers. Well on my way to 30, 40, 50. Who knows where it'll end. Uh, if you're if you're already subscribed to me, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple tap to change superhero supervillain mask. Like, I'll take this off and you can actually see it. Which I think is pretty dope, I'm not going to lie. Especially this one. I'm going to show you how to make it reflective, how to create it in GIMP, how to uh, add the tap to change effects, which is all in patch editor here, and even how to add some instructions so that when the filter opens up in the app, uh, the user knows how to interact with it. So that's everything that we'll be covering today. Let's pause this, open up a new project, minimize the first one so it doesn't break my damn computer. And then we're going to ignore that for a second and open up GIMP, which is the photo editing soft software that I'm using. It's free, open source, and in my opinion, just as good as Photoshop without all the cloud stuff that they have in the background. So yeah, once we've got this open, we're going to come over to our reference assets, which uh, you can download from Spark AR's website. The link for all of this will be in the description down below. I'm going to be using the face masculine and the face mesh trackers, which overlay on the, on the face and allow you to like sort of see where the mesh will move inside the app, uh, inside the app. So now that we've got this we want to create two new layers I'll call one hero mask and we'll call one villain mask although really they're not that different uh, it just depends on how well you <laughs> like I say it's usually about how well people draw like how good your artistic skills in GIMP are depend determines like the sort of outcome of all of this. Mine aren't great, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, I want to draw a mask, so I'm going to grab this free select tool. And in my opinion, the best place to start with this is uh, in the center, because then you can sort of figure out where you're going and uh, like try and keep it symmetrical, unless you don't want it to be symmetrical, which is totally cool. Uh, it's not symmetrical, but it's cool. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. So yeah, basically you want to use the mesh as a guide and drag and, and free select different parts of it. Uh, go all the way around it. Maybe it'll take a minute, but the more time you take, the better it'll look. Obviously this one's not going to look great because I'm trying to make the video about 10, 12 minutes. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to vamp now while I do this because it's quite uh, uninteresting to look at. Feel free to skip ahead about 20 seconds. Okay, we're almost done. Almost there. Yes. Okay, so now we've got this. It's the wrong mask, so I'll rename it in a second. <laughs> but this is going to be our hero one. Now you're going to come over to the fill tool. And I just use white so that I can change the color later. But you could probably do any color you want. If you actually want a specific design, you don't want to affect the color later, then yeah, just draw it in here. But otherwise, white's pretty handy. Uh, you can see mine's a little uneven here. I could have changed that. Uh, I I could have changed that, but now it's a little bit too late. I could probably come in and just draw that and fill it in, which I might I might do. We'll see how that goes. And then you can sort of just fill in the gaps. Yeah. Okay. So I'll rename that one Hero Mask and this one Villain Mask. Because I, I always think of villains as having like spiky, uh, too sort of sharp masks that look like they'd hurt you if you got too close. So yeah, we'll do the same thing for this. Uh, actually, no. You know what I'm going to do instead? I'm just going to delete that entire layer. I'm going to duplicate this one. Uh, make it invisible underneath. Make this one visible. And then I'm just going to add some spikes in. Like... Uh, like this and then I'll paint it and then I'll do it again <laughs> on the other side maybe around here it doesn't really matter too much for this tutorial but like like I say the more time you take the more time you spend on it the better it look obviously this looks like trash <laughs> but that's okay that's 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 really the aesthetic of this channel oh look I didn't even know that you could do that that's impressive I guess it is the free select tool. It doesn't make sense. 
at us learning together. Okay, so <laughs> now that we've got those, we'll make these layers invisible and we'll export these to uh, as uh, villain mask. Oh, I'm not very good today. I just finished work, it's very early in the morning. And I'm tired. Villain mask dot PNG. It's not a great villain mask, but you know what I'm saying. Like the more you do, the better it looks. And then we'll do hero mask dot PNG. We'll export both of those to the desktop. And then we can minimize this. We don't need that anymore. We've got our two masks. Uh, and we've got our new project. So we'll switch over to the FaceTime. Hi, it's been a while. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put this back up, let's make some noise, cool, so now that we've got that, we have a brand new scene, first thing I'm going to do is add our face mesh, that will appear inside of a face tracker, it's nested in there, and um, we want to add a second one, now you can add more, you can have like a neutral one that is uh, zero and just has nothing, and then you tap and you add the masks, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using two face meshes, hero, and villain both of which I would like to make some material layers for and villain okay and now that we've got this done what well, might as well get it out of the way we just control click both of these and under the visible section where you can make them visible or invisible ignore this little checkbox and click this little orange arrow That'll open up your patch editor and it'll throw both of these in as patches, which we'll be getting to in a second. So just sort of to get that out of the way, save a bit of time, throw those in there. Now we're going to want to add our textures. So we'll drag these two that we've created in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever. We'll drag those into our assets panel. Now they're there. So we can come up and, oh, something's frozen. I wonder what's happening. Uh, okay, so we're back. I don't know what that was, but cool. Uh, yeah. So now we'll come over to our hero uh, texture, and we're gonna add the hero mask, and we'll come over to our villain texture, and we'll add the villain mask. And now you can see they're both there. There's no interaction yet. You can't tap to change. Even if I simulate touch, there's nothing because these aren't connected to anything right now. I also control click both of these and change the shader type to physically based which will make them appear a little bit more realistic uh, like mapping onto the actual shape of the face as a physical object you can see it better over here like a Phantom of the Opera thing going on but yeah so now that we've got that done I'm going to change the color of them so our hero is blue in the last one and our villain was red so let's do that cool uh, and now to do the shiny bit so that comes from down here click add asset and then under environment texture presets these are a bunch of st uh, pre-selected it's like standard HDRI images which are 360 degree images that capture all the light in the scene uh, like in a much higher resolution than typical photographs they're great for uh, 3d modeling and things like that because you can add virtual lights to your scene reflections I just pick a random one for now I'm gonna use machine shop because it's quite bright and shiny uh, and I'm going to use it for both, although you can have separate ones for each if you want to really tweak the design, make it more personal. So for here, and that's what's for, so what you want to do, sorry, is come down here to environment. You can do it, I think, both at the same time if you check the box. Then add the texture, machine shop. And there you go, it's a little bit shiny now. You can use these surface parameters to adjust the metallic, uh, the roughness. Although, I should be down here doing it, on this layer. Uh, uh, you can make it super metallic, uh, you can make it super matte, like rough, or you can have it somewhere in between. This one down here, occlusion, str, <laughs> occlusion, it doesn't actually say what it is, no matter what, occlusion strength. But you don't actually need that right now because there's no ORM texture, there's no, nothing, nothing related to that. So yeah, basically I'm going to set mine to be about here, nice dark, little bit reflective. You can even change the uh, opacity and under environment you can actually change the rotation of the image. So because it's 360 degrees, there's a light coming, there's a light source coming from all directions, which means you can rotate that image and find sort of the best reflection, no buildings, no background, whatever you're looking for. We'll do the same over here real quick, we'll sort of get, I don't know, maybe that, 
uh, we'll figure out in a minute when we can click around. And now we're going to come into a patch editor and create the interactive elements. I've already got our hero and villain uh, patches, but we're going to need to interact with those. So the first thing we're searching for, double tap on the patch editor to open this menu, and then search for screen tap. There's a whole bunch of options like blinking your eyes, opening your mouth, all kinds of stuff. Shake your head, but simple one is screen tap. It's the easiest one. It's the most like functional on Instagram and Facebook. So we'll just be using that now for this example. So we've got a screen tap, and we're going to drag over here to uh, add a counter. And the counter is going to iterate through whatever number we set, whatever count we set, uh, like 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, in this case, it will just be 2, so it'll be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And that will be how we uh, change everything, switch it up. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to add this equals exactly, which checks, as this iterates, it checks whether this number is equal to this number, or this number, or this number, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm struggling with this video, but I don't really want to start again. <laughs> Just general fatigue. So yeah, now you want to copy this, paste it, and connect them both up. But what you'll see is that it's iterating through five down here as our maximum count. And up here we're on two, three, four, and then back to zero. Because these are set at zero, both of them are visible right now. And when I go to one, Neither one of these are one, so everything's invisible. Two, three, four, all the way back around. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this number here to one. Now we can see it. That's pretty cool. I'll probably change the shader and reflections and stuff in a minute. And then we'll change this count down here to two because we've got one, two. And all uh, in computer programming, all sort of sequence, num numbered sequences tend to start at zero. So we've got zero, one, and it resets. Here we go. Look at that. Now I'll quickly come in here and adjust this a little bit. I uh, kind of wanted it to be yeah brighter than it was. A little bit. Something like this. I don't know. Tell me, what, let me know what you think in the comments down below if you made it this far in the video. Or don't even comment on the mask. Just let me know that you made it this far. That would also be pretty cool. So yeah, now we've got all this. I'm just going to add the instructions really quick. Uh, we'll come up here to device, sorry, uh, custom instructions, and then we'll click create, instruction on opening. That'll add these patches into your scene, runtime, uh, less than, and instruction. Less than is sort of similar, it's functional the same way as equals exactly, except instead of like checking to whether two numbers are the same, it checks whether the total, the count, the timer here is lower or higher than this timer, this count that we've set here, in this case five seconds. So the runtime is when the app actually starts, and then the less than checks whether the timer is less than five seconds and then the interaction is what we need to enable right now so we'll come up here to project edit properties capabilities instructions custom instructions select instructions to use and then as you can see there's a whole freaking list of them but uh i'm just going to use tap to change again because that's what we're still using you want to copy this token here, can highlight it, copy that, and then paste it down here in the token section of the instructions patch. Now when you refresh, you see the time has already begun, and we're well over five seconds, so there's no instructions on here yet. But if I hit refresh, you see that down there, they show up. Timer starts, this is checked, five seconds passes, and the instructions disappear. It's pretty cool, pretty simple. Uh, that is literally everything in this video. Uh, I showed you how to imp how to create the two masks in GIMP, how to export them, import them in here, uh, add some environment textures so you can change the sort of reflective properties, uh, and then how to Im uh, add some user interaction with patch editor and all kinds of cool stuff. I don't know. This video is rambling and long. It's already almost 15 minutes. Damn. Uh, thanks for watching. Nobody made it this far, so. I mean, I don't know how to end these videos anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like 8 in the morning, 9, no, it's 9, it's 9.20 in the morning, I've been up all night, and I'm super tired, but I'm going to try and make more videos, thanks for watching, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe subscribe, I don't know, I've run out of thoughts, like, <laughs> bye. <laughs>
And I'm back again, and I'm wearing the same mask I was at the start of the video because I accidentally closed the project that we just made. But I forgot to mention the obvious thing that I have mentioned at the end of all the other videos but somehow seem to keep forgetting, which is the compression issue. When you export this to test on a device, oftentimes you'll get like a blurry screen. It looks, I'm looking at it right now on my phone. You, you can't see that, but I can. <laughs> it's blurry, and you'll see it when you export to your own devices. So what you're gonna do is highlight both of these, control click, and then no compression on any devices when you export. Another thing you can do is uh, project, edit properties, compression, and increase the quality to 100%. Now when you export to test on your device, it will look exactly the same as it does on your, device, on your uh, desktop, and you shouldn't encounter that issue uh, anymore. Just a little tip. Thanks for watching, peace.